Welcome back to Demasking Addiction. My name is Demisha Lawless, and I am so grateful you all are here. I really hope that you guys are enjoying this series and have enjoyed it thus far. I'm super grateful to God that he gave this um, series called What Is It Like um, to me so that I hope it can help others around us. Um, this is the last and final interview, and what better way to top it off than a substance abuser's perspective? I'm super excited about it because this is always coming from a normie's perspective, but for once, it's coming from somebody else's that's actually walked it themselves, and it's super awesome. So would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, Damascus Edition. My name is Carlos Gooden. And I'm a recovering addict. Um, like they say on the movie Life, when they was trying to determine who the baby was, I'd have had. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my god, Daddy, we're starting this off like this. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow, that was a good one. Um, okay, so thank you for introducing yourself. First question. Let's into it is what is it like or what was it like being in a family full of normies i'd rather touch on the what is it like okay. um i suffer with the de uh the disease of addiction i think with that my mind process um is a little my thought process is a little different than a normie um I may suffer with things that they don't suffer with or may or may not understand as far as what I have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, even though it's normal stuff, everybody else has to deal with it, but I might internalize it a little different than a quote unquote normie. So we're talking about that the thought process is different between the substance abuser and the quote unquote normie themselves. Would you say that you ever felt like an anomaly or misjudged or on the outside? I've, I've, I'm going I'm to lean more towards the outsider. Um, before I knew I was suffering when I was growing up younger, started at a real young age. Uh, I never thought I felt fed in. I've always felt like an outsider, um, even due to my family growing up. Uh, school, whatever the case may may have been, I've, I, I've always felt like an outsider. And even your personal family, as in children and spouse, you even felt like in your intimate space as an outsider as well? Yes. yes. That's fair. Yes. That's fair. Yeah, because I suffer from something that that you guys don't. So there's going to be that feeling of difference as far as, you know, y'all may think of one way or I may think of one way or I may think this is right. You know, it's just different because y'all don't suffer from what I suffer from. I think when you say we don't suffer from what you suffer from. I believe that addiction is a family disease. Absolutely. So in a sense, we're all battling this addiction. However, mentally, we're not battling it the same way you are. Right. As in your trials and how to overcome triggers and how to um, deal with poor or even well coping skills to be a better is. person right. in that aspect we don't deal with it the same however i think the impact could be the same across the board absolutely i totally agree i totally agree um so you kind of like how has the disease of addiction impacted your life and your family dynamic wow Man, it impacted all of my children and and my wife to a to a big degree. You know, you 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 stemmed off from my addiction to to have a a great 
uh, content and a, a great purpose, you know, and, and one to, you know, help other people. That's, that's very impactful. Um, you know, just relationships being lost, you know, or being subsided or, you know, trust and, and, and man, the list goes on and on and on, you know, there, you guys is, um, you know, growth as far as going from, from school to high school to, you know, trying to figure out things on your own, me being an addict in those situations impacted a, a big deal, um, in my kids' life, as far as my wife, <laughs> wow. My 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 wife has actually seen me go to jail, you know, suffering from things that she might have couldn't pay, or me not being home. I mean, for years, and I still think the residue. It's it's still on my family, but man, that's that's a that's a tough question for me to to me to revisit because today it impacts me to know that I took my family through that. That is the impact that the disease of addiction has had on your family is trust. How would you tell somebody through your own personal journey is how do you rebuild that trust if it's at all possible? It may not be possible. Um, God played a big, big part in, in my recovery and the growth in my children and my wife. Uh, all I did was I, I kept, you know, doing what was in front of me. I kept going to meetings. I, 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 I involved myself in, in, um, recovery um I was consistent I just kept going and kept going and I had to realize that this was for me I couldn't do it for my family to to gain that trust I had to I had to trust and believe in the process of recovery you do things in a certain time and and, and in a certain time that trust will be gained and and you just have to you have to really rely and 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 really believe in in recovery. You know, we destroyed a lot of things. You know, wounds don't heal overnight. You know, they take a while. I think that's really good, wise advice to give, especially from the substance abuser's perspective. Because what I've personally seen in therapy, when I'm with the client, they expect the family to forgive overnight, and it's like. No, I mean, you may have been the substance abuser out in the streets per se, but your family was dragged along with you. Absolutely. The pain and the turmoil and the manipulation and everything that comes along with it, this disease is impacting everybody. And so to think that trust can be gained and respect can be gained overnight, is unrealistic. And so it's kind of hard to receive that from a quote unquote normie uh, especially in therapy, because it's like, well, who are you to say that? But when it's echoed by somebody who's walked it themselves, um, it's really good to hear you say that. So hopefully somebody watching this video can be like, oh, maybe she does know what she's saying. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Were there any trials you encountered, encountered being the substance abuser in a family who doesn't identify, aka as a substance abuser, as you do? And if so, how did you overcome them? Ooh, here we go again. Those trials. Man. Yes. Um, like we go back and say, you know, the things that me and Demisha has been mentioning, you know, being, being an addict and having a family there's going to be several trials, especially when they stick around as long as my family stuck around. Uh, we we have so many trials. I mean, as as far as um, I mean, you name it, having having to to move, you know, just having to 
you know, put my family in vulnerable situations. You know, it's all kind of trials. I mean, um, how did I overcome them? Came them with the with with God first, but you know, just I really, really, I really got in recovery, and that was that was my main life. You know, I didn't care about, I had to disconnect myself from what had happened in my trials to grow and get healthy. So that's, that's the, that's the answer to that question. You got to, you got to be persistent. You got to be consistent. You got to, you got to stick it out and your main health it's what has to happen the most. Your, your your recovery had to be selfish. And I was selfish with my recovery. And I still am. I was selfish for my recovery. And you have to you have to get that way. Even and, and that's gonna make your family even more um, you know, kind of upset and have to go in and not understand what's going on when you even do that. So that was an issue for a while with, with my family. When I finally came home, my first two years, I was, I still didn't get it. I wasn't daddy. I isolated a lot because uh, I was trying to figure out and put keep myself in a in a certain place to where I had to sit down and not think about doing, not leaving, not going, taking money, not going, doing drugs. So in that process, I mean, it still took a lot out of us, you know, until, you know, I finally got the tools to be able to interact and and do all the things. I had to learn all over again. It's interesting to hear you say that because it makes me think of a, another question that wasn't on your list, sorry, <laughs> but is how do you integrate back into your family once you come out of rehab? Because you mentioned that it takes time and you have to unlearn some things. And I should say more so my question is when you when you come home back from rehab, um, what in what way do you unlearn those behaviors? How do you try to integrate yourself back into your family now as a sober person? And not only as a sober person, but a newly sober person within itself. It's 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 going to take time. Um, like I said, you got to trust the process. You just because I got home and I ain't done drugs or alcohol in in six months, that doesn't mean anything. They used to tell me, "You've been doing drugs for ten years. You 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 clean three. The math don't add up. You may not." You might not gain your family's trust and love or whatever it is until you get, you may have to get that 10 pass mark where you was doing drugs. It may take you 15 years. And it, it and it took uh, that, that long for me before I did to be back and have the trust and shoot, get a cold to the house, uh, the keys, or. Uh, <laughs> No, to be able to say, "Hey, I'm going to the store," man, it took a, it took a long time. So when I come home, I just trust the process. Mind you, your family is looking at you; they they watching your every single move. You home, the house been in some kind of a, a peaceful place since you've been in recovery or in treatment, and then you come when you come back, you kind of reopen those wounds. So they're really watching you. So you have to be consistent. You have to, you have to have a, a, a schedule. If that's going to work, go to treatment, go home. Work, treatment, home. Work, treatment, home. This may take a long, long time. But those are things that I did. I did. And it's, it's what I do today still. From I go to work. I volunteer still sometimes. And I go home. I, I don't want 
I'm I'm so afraid of the streets now. It's ridiculous, you know, because what what I what God has allowed me to regain, I, I don't want to lose that. So just to answer your question, you know, guys, ladies, you know, just just stay consistent with with your recovery. You know, make it first. Trust and believe in the principles and the process and the and everything that that you're being taught, and and it'll come. I've never seen. Me and me and recovery and, and 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 my group, the people who did what they was told, how they was told, and when they was told, 90% of those guys are successful. They're still my friends to this day. So, you know, that's how I did it. Yeah. I have to echo that if you stay with it and you work with it, it'll work for you. And I also want to echo that putting your recovery first matters. I see that on the back end of things only because I've gone through the schooling of it all. But to the family dynamic that watches these videos, it is very imperative that the substance abuser puts his or her recovery first. Because if he or she does not put their recovery first, then all other things will fall back to like it once was. And if you love that person enough, and if you care about that person enough, which is very hard when you're in the thick of things, I'm only speaking because I'm on the other side of it all. But going through it, if you are going through it, I really do truly encourage you to give them that space to put their recovery first. Because they're having to unlearn a lot of things that they've learned over time. That's behavioral changes, behavior pattern changes, those people, places, and things that I spoke to you guys about recently. That takes time to change. It's not like a habit that you form in 21 days. No, this is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really did just want to echo putting the recovery first, despite how chaotic it may be in your world right now. It's yes. very important. Um, do you think that there is value and, or do you think that there is value in apologies in the disease of addiction? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I've been married 25 years and my wife has, has at least 20 of those, at least 15 of those 25 she has been a main focal point of my my um my recovery and and when i was out there and we can be at dinner or we can just be hanging around sitting next to each other just you know just me and her and i'll say babe i'm sorry you know i, I still apologize to this day um, it, it's, it's great value in that. And, and my children, and, you know, every now and then, you know, it took, it took a while, especially with Demisha. I, I, I apologize. Hey, I, I can you know my last apology. Hey, if it was maybe a year ago or so, um, yes, yes. But, but, but in an apology, you can apologize, um, the, the apologies was is for me. It's for me to release myself and, and to give and forgive myself. Not only being sincere to them to to let them know, you know, that wasn't me. You know, I'm sorry. You know, but I do it a lot of times to free keep continuing to free myself. You know, hey, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean that. So, absolutely. What advice would you give? to a substance abuser that is currently using and or in their early stages of recovery? So if you're currently using and your life is spiraled out of control, um, there's, there's only a few things that's going to happen to you. You're either going to, you're either going to, overdose you either going to go to jail or, or or you're going to die 
that's that's the only option of of using, you know. Um, but for the one who is who is currently in in recovery or early in recovery, it's hard. I went to treatment twice. Um, been to several little little halfway houses. You know, I didn't. I didn't. It's hard. Change is hard, but if you get to your, hopefully you're at your 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 rock bottom. Once you get to that rock bottom stage, your mind opens up in a different place to where you want to be receptive to new things and new ideas and new ways to live because you just everybody's gone, family's gone. There's nobody but you. And there's something that you 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 may or may not be doing that you you have no control of, and you don't know how to to help get. I mean, you know, get help. So being early in 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 recovery, just trust the process. Just trust trust the process. Believe in yourself. Uh, wanting to grow and 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 have a better life. You know. I promise you, if you if you stick in there, man, you'll be amazed before you're halfway through. So stick it out, man. Just stick it out, man. It's very important, you know. I'm, I'm not on on this interview for because you know it's something that I saw. It works if you work it. That's good. Um, you ask your addiction. I really hope that this was helpful for you guys to see a perspective that um, a few of you guys are are identifying as substance abusers or recovering addicts, recovering alcoholics, or currently in the thick of it all. And in some of the comments that I received, I hope that this video truly, truly impacts you. And I hope that you're one of the ones watching. So. Until next time, be masking addiction. I love you guys.